Tell us what show number it is. Episode 122. All right, very good. Wow. Well, welcome to the program. We got a big, we got kind of a big kind of, a, big kind of a heavy hitter thing going on. Today. Oh yeah. I mean, all kind of the big names and. The... I think these are San Diego A-listers. If they there are. was, a, um, you know, statues of famous San Diegans, yeah. they all would probably be on it. Yeah. Did we? Did anybody uh, bail out at the last minute because of uh, any scandal that you and I did on the? Oh uh, no. Oh, okay. No, no. Good Everything's so. good. Thank you guys for coming in today. We are live. Give it up for the audience. Okay. I say we get right into it, don't you? Let's do it. I want to introduce the very first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, originally from Ramona, she's my favorite on KUSI News. Give it up for Allie Wagner. You are everywhere these days. Me? I see you online. I see you doing reels. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your new deal? I mean, <laughs> you got to be involved in the social media game these days, right? You know why you're here, to be, uh, to be honest with you? Why, Tommy? Your haircut. <laughs> oh I know you didn't get, get new do. You know, y you change your hair and just do something different for the first time in 10 years, and people suddenly take notice. I don't know. I, but. I got a question. So what is it like as a working mom now? Because you're a working mom before, but now you're a double working so mom. So this is crazy because I was just looking at the date. I happen to know this because a friend of mine, it's her birthday tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It was a year ago that I brought um, Archer, our youngest, and he was just a few months old. And I was oh. getting ready to come back to work. And so I was like, oh my gosh, that was a year ago that yeah. we had little baby Archer in yeah. the old studio and hanging out. And it's amazing how time flies. The, na the, the names for your children, you know, they're, they're destined to be. Pitchers and quarterbacks, and I mean, or race what are their car, names? Or race car drivers. What are yeah. their names? Atlas and Archer, yeah, and Atlas, and Atlas is three. Archer is one, and they are so much fun. We yeah. are having just a blast with the two of them. They crack me up. So. And how's uh, Dad doing, Trevor? Dad is busy, man. He is. Uh, he's getting ready. Obviously, um, we've talked about this before, but him and I met at Comic Con mm -hmm. years ago. So. Um, he is involved, does staffing for that, and so right. he's getting ready for Comic Con, which is super fun. And he's got a couple other great businesses, though. He helped us out a lot when we were uh, when we started doing kind of our imaging stuff yeah. for the new studios here. Yeah. So he's fantastic. So that's where you guys met. How did you guys meet at Comic Con? Like, how, how did it ha all happen? Well, I talked. Uh, I talked to him. Why we? Why he? He had a whole bunch of staff. And it was I an was interview like, thing, right? It was an interview thing. Yeah. Who are these people? So actually, our first like interaction. Is on, is on, was on camera. Like the first time you guys met, it's actually in effigy. It's right there on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I have it so on. So when YouTube. you're, so when you're talking to him live on KUSI <laughs> for the very first time, yeah. were you thinking, hey, I no, like this guy? No, of course I not. I like the cut I, of I his mean, jib. It was, it was more the conversation afterwards. His brother and I had both worked at the same Albertsons. It was like, hey, how do we not know each other? And then. We went and had lunch two days later, and the rest is history. How did that manifest itself, the lunch? <laughs> who, asked, yeah. who, asked, who asked who? Oh, this is a I'll question. Wait, okay, wait. so him and I have two totally different opinions on this. Okay. I say he was putting the vibe out there and uh -huh. made it very clear yeah. that, you know. I know him. He, I believe that side. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he'll say that I asked first, that I was like, oh, let me know if you're, you know, back in town and want to get some coffee. How were the numbers passed? I want to know, how, the, how was that done these days? Like, <laughs> it was through Like, email. here's my digits. This was through email. Okay. <laughs> And we are two local San Diego yeah. kids, which is really cool. We're we gonna get him in here at some time together. I want to hear. I want to hear the whole story. <laughs> I know you're. Well, as a surprise to you, ladies and gentlemen, Trevor. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Just kidding, just kidding. So that would be a surprise. That would be a surprise. So how many years is this for you at KUSI? Oh my gosh. I started on the Prep Pigskin Report, I think, in 2008. Mm -hmm. I went part-time at KUSI in 2010. Oh um, so 13-ish years. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, your legacy. Congratulations. It's been a long, it's, it's a long time. Yeah. Are you still involved with, with the Prep Pigskin stuff? Just with the Pep Rallies. So we are gearing up for those, getting ready um, oh. to kick those off. I'm still looking for my week one pep rally uh -huh. at this moment. So How do you decide that? Or do, or do the audience decide for I, you? I just, you know, All talk right. to some people who has a yeah. good game that week. Who can I convince that wants to You got to go to Castle off? Park. Have you ever been to Castle yes, Park? Yes, I've been to Castle Park All several right, times. Of course I have. I've literally been to almost every school in the county. Is I there one school that's been, that you visited more? I seem to see it at Valhalla High School a lot. Of a hall, well, you noticed that though because you went there. Yes, I know, but still, though, I, but I would, you know. Yes, uh, there are some schools that really enjoy yeah. doing it every year. Yeah. They want to be involved every year. Yeah. They want that culture of rooting for right. your team. They they want that recognition of being on TV. They sure. want it every year. So usually, yeah, Valhalla, Grossmont, a few of those schools yeah. that I hear from every year. That Not Castle there. Park, though. Just saying. <laughs> Did you All go right. to Castle Park? Or I, I went to Castle okay. Park. I know. Who, See? who could have graduated? Well, then, Castle Park class of 2012. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No. 2012. That's incredible. 82. 1812. <laughs> All right, let's bring out our next guest. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen. I know who this hippie is. He was a rock and roll promoter. He was a county board of supervisor. He was our former San Diego mayor. Current apple farmer. Ladies and gentlemen, Roger with you for so many years and now you're so wispy when you walk in here. It's just the picture of retirement. He's got the white slacks on. He's looking good. He's an apple for you're, you're just glowing. Very Pat Boone. Yeah, very, very Pat Boone. Oh, come on now. No, I'm not that old. No. You don't look old. You so look far, young. Beauty and the Beast of this show. That's what I'm telling you right hey, now. Hey, fun fact. I worked with Roger before I worked at KUSI That's when right. I worked for I, a I minute remember. radio. I remember so. the story. Yep. Were you at were you Kogo? Yeah. Yes, I did promotions for Kogo and Extra Sports way back when. Isn't that how this all starts in promotions? <laughs> it always starts. It really does. <laughs> and then people become big stars. Yeah, <laughs> right. By the way, I'm just the first time I've been in your studio. What do you this think? is incredible. We made this just for you, Fantastic. Roger. It's called the Roger Hedgecock Pavilion. <laughs> I, <I'm, laughs> I love it. <laughs> Grandiose. You know, we know you as being our mayor and everything, but how are the apples doing? I'll tell you what, the apples this year are going to be the best ever. We had 45 inches of rain. Wow. 12 days of snow on the ground, which yeah. the apple trees love. Yeah. And now I've got more apples. I had to go thin them. I just got back, you know, for a whole is harvest Is harvest time now? September. September. Oh, I'm but sure is. Oh, I see. So yeah, you're tending them now. Tending them down. Getting, getting them thinned out. Because they come in clusters like yeah. grapes. So you have to thin them out so you get one that's going to grow into an apple. Okay. So most of your crop's on the ground. But the crop remaining is really good. And so, what's, it, what's your farm called? A Vulcan Valley Apple Farm, Julian, California. Beautiful yeah. Julian. So what? So wait a second. I, want, I forgot to ask you. So what kind of apples do you grow? Because oh, we got seven varieties. All the good really? ones. Yeah, all the no good kidding. ones. Uh, fr from the cooking apple to the sweet, you know, sweet eating apple, yeah. the whole range. Yeah. yeah. Well, me and Tommy were kidding. We had throwing. Apples. No, you got to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can attest. Hucking apples. We take the family every year. She's it there. Is we, such a. We fun promise thing. that we're going to get together this year and go out there you and, go and, and check it out. I, out it. I was dreaming about you last night. Uh oh, that's great. <laughs> I said. I said. No, I said. That's still wrong and creepy for as long as we've known each other. Wasn't it a great opening line though? It got everybody's attention. Yeah. So, for sure. No, but I was thinking I'm going to be on the show, and I was advising you because you are you're on a trajectory, you know, going up. They're going to get you on Saturday Night Live. They're going to do the opening monologue. <laughs> and so I told you, I was going to take the, the ending of that monologue. It was the great, the great American philosopher, uh -huh. Richard Penniman, yeah. who said, it's Saturday night, and I just got paid. Yeah. I'm fooled about my money. I don't, I don't try to say, yeah. but it's Saturday night. I'm feeling so good. I, and I'm now I'm losing Which is actually a Little Richard song. It's a Little Richard song. Yeah, which is Richard it's a, Penniman. It's a Richard Penniman, right. the Georgia Peach. Right. Remember him. That's exactly right. And, and, uh, and he said, it's Saturday night, and I'm feeling, and, then, yeah. and I just got paid. Fool about my money, don't try to save. Saturday night. Wow. Feeling fine, right? It's awesome. The band knows those guys, right? Yeah. Little Richard, <laughs> come on now. Wop, bam, baloo, bop, bop, bam, bam, boom. boom. Yeah. See, they'll go. No, see, they'll do it. Oh, they'll start. They'll start. They'll do it. Oh, they'll do it. <laughs> you can't just start a song. Because I'll just play it. 
All right. So, are you full time appling? Are you are you advising any politicians these days? We just oh, that, that's a secret. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of guys pounding on the doors right. now because it's so unsettled. Everything in politics is so well, unsettled, sure. and right. so tense, and so you know. Well, we just heard the former mayor, mayor Faulkner. It's announced for uh, county supervisor. Right. Coming District out, three. It? District three. My right. old district, by the yeah. way. Which I think, which I think is a good thing. I mean, it's it's very difficult to move needles uh, as a mayor in this town. We need more candidates. Um, we need more people to step up. Even yeah. though stepping up means you're just under the light of just all kinds of abuse. Right? Yeah, sure. But but stepping up is what we need. Well, I think I think especially in this town because in this in, in these inflationary times, and we're going to another election year, and it's 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 going to get it's, the rancor shows up in San Diego just like anywhere else. And I think we need some leadership. I think yeah. we need a few a few different choices of leadership. Well, what what thing is getting better in San Diego? You know, you're, you're really well, I think this show is getting better, Roger. The getting be well, the studio is getting better. Hey, hey. hey. All right. <laughs> Let's bring out our next guest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club, Mr. Joe Parker. <laughs> hey, Joe. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Harper. Well, it's nice to be here. Wow. Especially between these two. Oh, well. <laughs> We've shared a lot of microphones together. Yes, I we have. Yeah. We've, and and I said, it's actually very funny. When I walked in, I said, neither one of them probably remember, but Roger and I talked about it, that it, when I was in promotions, we were at the track. I remember doing a live report, and I was helping figure out how to bet on the horses and Joe does so it all kind of comes full circle doesn't it years later I had these tout guys on telling me what's going to be the winners yeah. they were losing every one yeah. she had more winners than the tout guys it was a great show yeah I I, I there, there is this kind of thing about KUSI news people I've gotten more tips at, at Del Mar that have come to fruition <laughs> I don't know why it's you guys Vince in the back her I think Mathis even I'm not sure Mathis no, no I, Mathis I, I, I try to way. Joe Joe tells me all everything yeah, we, we fix a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, Mr. So Harper. What, what we're making you, news here. Yeah, what, what is, <laughs> Mr. Harper. Yes, sir. You know, the track's going on, and, and I, I'm i probably going to go to the track and Not bet. a chance. You will not go to the track. You know do you, you Do you know some horses I can bet on? I mean, I mean, is that fair For to sure? ask you? Like, hey, who, who should I bet on? You know, like, I'm the worst tout that ever lived. I, I, I'll tell you, every time I went, I'll tell you a long story, short story a long time ago. I was speaking at a, at a thing downtown. The chief of police was there, the, the, the sheriff was there, and somebody asked me who I liked. Well, Barbara, my wife, is a pretty good handicapper, and I had her think. So I pulled it. I said, well, in the first race, I liked every single horse won. Every <laughs> single one won. I'm thinking, the sheriff is going to call me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he well, is. Obviously, there's a problem here. <laughs> what do you do now? Like, we're talking about just uh, the 20th, I believe, is the opening, right? June 20th? Uh, uh, 21st. 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 So what's yeah. your, what is your day like right now? Is everything sort of already in motion, or are there things that you're, are you herding 400 kittens through a wheelbarrow trying to get them all in one place? Uh, that's about it, yeah. 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 We're going to be looking at close to 2,000 head of horses wow. uh, that are now coming in right now. And uh, um, so it's, it's, you know, we've got this great ship and wind program. Right. So if you're in, like, Saratoga, and you look at our racetrack and say, well, that, that's a nice race, but uh, we'll pay you $5,000 to ship in. And we'll give you a 30% bonus on anything you win. So wow. all of a sudden now we've been getting all these eastern horses in there. And so the fields are bigger. When the field sizes are bigger, the handle's bigger. And so last year we made more money than we ever had made before. And, uh, and this year the, the purse money for horsemen is, uh, is up to $800,000 a day. It's $25 wow. million. Dollars. So we will get some really good horses. Well, and if wow. I'm not mistaken, reporting on economic income or economic uh, impact of Del Mar so many years with KOSI on you guys, you guys are employing like 2,500 people? Uh, they're sorry, including parking attendants and stuff like that. There's there's a huge economic impact, not just in Del Mar, but all across, yeah. all across the region. It's because of it. And I, yeah. I, th I think that 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 should not uh, that should not go unheralded because yeah. it's it's a it's a big piece of our economy. It, it is a big piece, and and with our our company, the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club is a is a not for profit. So all the money we make, the the profits go to the state of California. Um, so the state makes out pretty well. So I think last year we but. 12 to 15 million dollars goes into helping pay back the bonds on it's that. It's the only profitable so, thing they get out of it. Yeah, and it's a good deal. I mean, a good deal when the COVID hit and the no fare. And, uh, you know, yeah. All right, two questions. <laughs> yes, sir. July 21st, as it approaches, mm -hmm. you must be getting phone calls from big time celebrities saying, hey, can I go into the Thoroughbred Club? Um, mm -hmm. Who are they? 
and what what's time their, they and what's in. their number? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> our, but, but all seriousness, the, you're you're getting you must be getting uh, phone calls, right? Yeah, like the Kardashian. We, we, we get we we do get a few, uh, but I'll tell you in, in the. In the past, I, one day, I got a call. It's Cary Grant. Remember him? Yes. No. Okay. Cary says, Joe, <clears throat> he said, can I come down to Del Mar? Can I have a, a chair, a seat somewhere to sit? I said, no, we're full. <laughs> and uh, dead silence, he said, are you kidding? I said, yes. <laughs> 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 Cary, come on. And Cary came down. He was, he was the nicest guy in the world. And uh, I, we, we did a thing for Mervyn Leroy, who directed... Uh, um, one of those great movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like... Uh, Nailed it. Was it Hollywood? Uh, yeah, it I was, was trying to remember yeah, what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're old, right? Well, I know so that. We, we, we can't remember yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was uh, Yellow Brick Road and all that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, he was having a, a party for him. And so they, they got all these actors, these great actors and everything. And he, But he was also the president of Hollywood Park Racetrack. So they asked me to go on this committee, 23 people. I'm sitting backstage. We're all going to be introduced. Everybody in Hollywood's out there. I look down there. There's everybody, every actor you've ever heard of. And I, Cary Grant was next to me because it was an alphabetic alert. I said, Cary, I'm the only guy here. I don't know. And he said, <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> and, and, he nervous. and he started telling me the worst jokes I've ever heard. I mean, they were, you know, but he was a wonderful guy. And, uh, yeah. Do, do those guys that come, the, the, those big names, those guys bet also, or are they just there to be seen in their, in their hats? A little stuff? both, yeah, little, yeah. yeah. Some, we've had some guys that, that were hitting it pretty big, and uh, some we had to ask to leave. And <laughs> Mickey Rooney, the worst guy. Comes in. <laughs> Mickey Rooney comes in, and you can go into the turf club or the clubhouse. Right. Turf club, we stamp this hand. Clubhouse, we stamp this yeah. hand. He pays for the cheap clubhouse. He gets through the gate, and he does this with his hands. Oh see? <laughs> Seriously. So the Jeez. security sees him, pulls him in. Didn't he have like 13 wives? I mean, we know this guy, right? Yeah, oh yeah, at least. Yeah. This is Mickey Rooney. Some of them were pretty... Uh, yeah. The 1940s, 50s yeah. Hollywood actor? Right. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he had a line, I'll tell you later, about <laughs> Ava Gardner. Yeah. Okay. That's but, funny. Yeah, we, um, we, we, we had to throw him out, you know. But two days later, he's on The Tonight Show, and Carson asks him, you, you like to bet the ponies, don't you? Oh, yeah, you got to go to Del Mar? Yeah. He said, that's a toilet place. Are, oh. Because <laughs> we threw him out, I guess. Well, I got a Joe lot Harper. of questions. Roger Hedgecock. Allie Wagner, I want to ask you about Tim Conway after the break. All right, on the air is on the air. I can't believe it. Summer's here. We got free apple farming. We got horse racing. Allie Wagner, the icon of San Diego broadcasting. <laughs> Welcome to On the Air. Gig at the Belly Up. We are playing. Where's Mary? Is Mary here? Yeah. Mary, have a, hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Yep. Dead mother. Where are we playing? August 11th. Oh, that's Belly right. This up. is this Fundraiser. is the Make a Wish thing, right? Make a Wish. Right. Yes. We're gonna have Avila come sing. Darren Greatley's opening up. Avila's gonna come sing. Avila's the little girl that we feature on here. Just, she's gonna come sing. She's gonna come sing with you. I had no idea. Yes. Okay. Wow. Make a Wish. What are yeah. we singing? I August 11th. Go to bellyup.com to buy tickets. All right. Very good. We'll pull I bet you guys day. have someone really cool introducing them on stage. <clears throat> Yeah, Joe Harper. Talk about it. Joe Harper's ah! coming in. <laughs> Are you going to be there? I think I'm introducing you guys. Okay, good. But I do have a question for Mr. Harper. Yes. The, the Jeff and Jerry radio show had one famous listener, and it was Tim Conway. Mm -hmm. We would do a segment on the radio, and Tim Conway would call the request line to chime in. And we were just so amazed. And he would say, hey, I'm going to the Del Mar racetrack. When I'm in town, I'll come visit you guys. You must know him or knew him. Yeah. How, was, how was it knowing Tim Conway? Tim Conway, what you saw was Tim Conway. Uh, he was funny. Every, I mean, we'd go out to dinner, and we'd all be cracking. I mean, you could tell him, Joe, he would laugh just as much as the rest of us would. He was just the, the nicest guy in the world, and his wife was terrific. But, uh, yeah, when, when we were building the new grandstand, was back in the, in the early 90s, and uh, he came out to see it. He, he and his wife walked around. I said, Tim, this is your chance. Pick any table you want. At any location in the turf club. And he said, you're kidding. I said, no, go ahead, find one. So he wandered around, and he said, well, how about here? I said, I don't know. Not that one. No, I've got another guy. Okay. <laughs> he said, well, how about over here? He said, I said, no, how about over here? We said, well, you can't see anything from over there. 
So finally I said, yes, Tim, you can have it, you know. So we gave him the table, and he, and he would come out every day, and, and at night we'd all go out to dinner and just, you know, I'd laugh and laugh. When he and Harvey Corman yeah. came down, my wife was having a charity ball call, Tim, can you help us? Sure. He, and he brought Harvey, he down, wow. he handed out tapes of the dentist sketch. I mean, yeah. he was just one of the nicest, greatest guys in the world. His, uh, his, his, and his son went on to radio fame up there at KFI for uh, yeah. Tim Conway Jr. Speaking of radio, uh, Mister, do you miss do you miss doing the after every day? No, I I, re <laughs> <laughs> I learned to do talk radio from you yes. because you worked in the same building. I was you were just KSU. a kid. I was. Yeah, and so were you, unfortunately. Yes. Um, <laughs> It's a long time ago. And I remember, and I keep on bringing this up, those days where, where Jimmy Valentine and you would, would talk about uh, topics locally, but there wasn't really the internet that there is right now. Right. And there was nothing but newspapers and stacks of papers that you, or articles in right. front of you. Right. And that, the, the, the thing that struck me was, you know, it takes about an hour off air to prep for an hour on air, they say, or more. Right. I kind of believe you must have prepped six hours for a three-hour show every day. Yeah. I mean, that must have been a grind for you. Yeah. No, it was a 24-hour thing because every time I would have something on, I'd get an inspiration for a story to tell, right. uh, a, a news article to cover. And, the, and I, the more obscure it was, the more I realized the audience hadn't seen that. And yeah. It would be something new, and you'd you know, package it in a way that was a story. And, then, and that's, that's why the ratings were so big. Well, and, the, and, the, and that's the thing. Is, <laughs> and, and, well, the other thing, too, is people talk to me about, do I miss doing talk radio? I, say, I don't miss the I miss doing it because you can move the needle in talk radio. You can yes, move you the can. needle in this city, and you have a number of times. Yep. Um, um, you know, keeping keeping the politicians accountable. Is it hard to do it from afar these days? Because uh, I know impossible. a lot of them call you, but that, that no, impossible. Yeah. And for ordinary citizens who are so frustrated and can't do a thing about it and can't, you know, their attitude is nobody's listening to me. Yeah. Right. And it's a very frustrating time. Uh, you is know, there someone right now on the radio or on television that that you watch and say, "Wow, that guy, that guy or that woman has it." You know, I don't even listen or watch anymore. And I'm sorry, I do watch KUSI. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, Don't get me wrong. Nice recovery. But yes, thank you very much. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, I've turned it all off. And I feel so much better. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's because there was a time when, when there was sort of this responsibility sitting in that afternoon drive spot. Yeah. And you and I were opposite at that point. You were at KFMB and I was at Kogo. Yeah. But there was a thing where you could sort of pick out, okay, um, there's, there's some political will here to move the needle, and the listeners are willing to do it. And, and people were, would actually throng towards whatever topic or, or personality was pushing that. I don't see that anymore in talk radio here. In no, and we had, we had that. When Schwarzenegger did his thing you know, on the recall of, of Gray Davis and, and all those kinds of things we did that were action-oriented, which you can't do yeah. today. And I the mean, Filner headlock days when we you know, re yeah. the, the recall Filner. Yeah, uh, yeah remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and, and I don't see those initiatives happening right now. No, I mean, they're not happening. We don't, is it that we don't have enough to argue about it? We're just not, we're just not to take Well, first of all, there was, enough. An, there, was an attack, <laughs> there was an attack on AM radio, right? They, Ford wanted to, to take the AM radios out of cars, yeah. which was our you know, bread and butter, right. and they were forced to put it back in, although you can get AM everywhere. But, right. but the point now is that there, there's not that use of the media. The media seems to be captured by one point of view, you know. And well, the, the, what I think that needs to happen is, is live and local. Even morning shows, live right. and local always ruled the day. Right. Which is which is why I think KUSI. So, and, so, so. and speaking oh, yeah. of live and local, that's right. I mean, a lot of people say, yeah. "Hey, Tommy, radio's going away. Telev local television's going away." No, it's not. But it does look different. Yeah. I mean, this is television. This is radio right here. Right. And a yeah. screenshot of my granddaughter. But uh, <laughs> but um, do you? How do you use social media with television now? Um, I think that the best way. I mean. For us now, yeah, it's using the medium to direct people to turn on the TV, saying, hey, this is where I'm at. You should tune in because you don't want to miss this, you know, and it's trying to capture that audience and trying to figure out a way to tap into that and still let people know what's happening. Or hopefully. do you also feel that social media is part of it? Even though they may not see you on television, they see you on here. Do you right. think that counts as well? Sure. Do you think, think there's an either or? Do you think some people see you on social that do not watch you on TV? Probably. Absolutely. That's an interesting yeah. part of it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because those are consumable bites at that point. Sure. Right? Sure. Gonna, I think that there's, a, like, say we do a pep rally and I post a recap on TikTok. I don't think a lot of those kids are watching it on TV, right. but they're going to see it on there. And that's, on li threads? and that's live and local. Yeah. 
That's exactly right. What about threads? Are you on threads? I am. What's yes, I did different. jump on it because you got it's something new and yeah, but yeah. Uh, we'll see where that goes. I don't know. Is MySpace still working for you? Yeah, I had the MySpace. <laughs> I had the MySpace. I remember that. Tom was my friend. Yeah, I remember. Rusty that. Nails and I had a new thing worked out for. We got some investors. He invested a little bit. He invested. It's called utwitface.com. And, uh, <laughs> and then they both lost their money and the lawsuit's still in I thought Amazon bought it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what you told you. Do you think people are locked into Twitter more these days? Or face what is the thing called? Facebook these days? Or Instagram or threads or I think, TikTok or yes, I think right now the majority of people are probably on Instagram. It depends on the generation. And the, yes. yeah, the age generational. Group. People you know? like your like your friends were on Facebook. <laughs> you know, uh, my friends are on Instagram. Do we, Mary, do I even have a Facebook account? Yeah, you do. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, now you, and now you know who posts our social media for. <laughs> but yeah, my kids, TikTok, it's all about TikTok and Instagram for my children. Well, speaking of news, I will tell you, a lot of where I get topical stuff is if you look at this new thing called Reels, right? And Reels are, are, are extended videos on all the formats where you can actually sort of see topical things. And I, and I think, boy, is that's what it's come down to. You and I had four 15-minute segments to get a right. point across. Right. Now you've got... 90 seconds, yeah. a minute and a half, to yeah. catch their attention and, to, and get people to, to, to act on it. I think that's a big place. It's this little bit different for, for San Diego media. Um, so what's next is going to be, of course, they're all going to watch this show to get their news. Every that's time. right. Exactly. Yeah. All right, I have more questions for everyone. I have rock and roll questions for Roger. I got movie questions. Hollywood questions Come on. for Mr. Harper. I have KUSI questions for Alex. On the air, it's on the air. There he goes. Love that horn. Wow. Do you like a horn section? Horn section. I love. Lastly, from the Michael Bolton band, Tomoka yeah. Jarvis, right off the uh, tour with Andy. Hey. Chris Sprague from Kenny Loggins and more, and of course Steve Dillard. Righteous Brothers, Leonard Skinner, Huey Lewis. They're the, great, they're the greatest. Yeah, yeah. The horn section. Good stuff. Of course. Mr. Harper. Yes, sir. So your grandfather, I mean, invented movies, basically. Cecil B. DeMille. Yes. And do you have a cool story? I mean, I know you can talk about Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments, but do you have another cool story like... Sinatra walking downstairs or something in your Yeah, head. who's in the kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 never could get her out of there. <laughs> no, actually, I got my first job was uh, as an actor in The uh, Greatest Show on Earth, wow. which won the best Oscar, the best picture of the year in 1952. It was shot in 5051. And uh, my big scene was being chased by a panther. The, the train wreck comes and the two church, the two circus things go and everything. And there's a little shot of a little boy coming out with a thing, and they draw a little toy thing, and I drop it, and I turn around, and I see the panther, and you know, well, this the thing it came about because he couldn't find a kid that was willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, absolutely. True. Was there a, yeah, there was no CGI back then. No, it was a real panther. Uh, there was no nothing. And uh, <laughs> I, we're at dinner one night, and I'm I'm seven. Okay, I'm sitting there trying to you know, not spill anything. And uh, my grandfather's telling my mother, well, I've got this scene coming up. I need a kid, and I can't find a kid. She goes, here, take him. <laughs> so I didn't know what it was. Thanks, I said, Mom. okay, well, I, what I end up is being chased by a panther. And the, I mean, the assistant director said, look scared. <laughs> easy. Uh, yeah. That's easy. I'm back in this thing waiting for my cue, and it's dark in there, and the train wreck is over, you know, the steam and the fire. And I see these eyes, this, you know, green eye. It's the panther. He's back there waiting for his cue, and he's being held by a trainer <laughs> who says, you know, kid, you just can't train a panther. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant director goes, look scared now. I say, come out of there, scared. Yeah. I trip, I you know, pick up my toy, I turn around. The panther got a little premature on his entrance, so I really ran with it. Twelve takes. Twelve takes of running down there, jumping into this woman's arm. It's supposed to be my mother. Her name was Beulah. She was an actress. A nice shit. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> Okay, I'm only seven, yeah. and my but mother you remembered was, that. My mother you was, you know, I, this woman, I jumped into her arms, and I thought, this is the most comfortable place that I've ever been in my whole life. 
don't want to stay here forever. So you messed it up, she had to do it five more times. So exactly. Exactly. Twelve takes. Anyway, <laughs> the next day I go to the brushes, I look at myself with my grandfather. He said, you did a good job, good job. I said, I, did, it, did it make it in the movie? No, they cut the whole thing. Because <laughs> oh, it was too scary. Yeah. You know, it was 1950s, you know, early 50s. You couldn't put child endangerment in. Did I hear that you are a consistent attendee of the Oscars? We've been lucky, yeah. We've been, go every year. I've You're been right. every year except, well, one. And that's the slap. The year of the I slap. I miss the slap. Wow. You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's, it's, it's great fun to go. And uh, we, we have a little charity deal with, uh, with the DeMille Foundation. And uh, we help the Oscars. We, they've got a new museum going now in Hollywood. It's really terrific. So, and you go, do you still go? You're a, f- a, a, you're a seat I filler. I was a seat filler for about 12 years. How did you get that job? Uh, my cousin, John Borja, was one of the producers, uh-huh. and he handled the uh, seat filling. And so, but it was cool because I would get the first five rows, and it's it was unbelievable because I'd be there sitting in the second row. There's Brad Pitt, Angelina. Did you get to talk to Neil? Uh, yeah. Or do they you're say not hi? supposed to. But, but did they uh, talk to you? I was, I was sitting there, and, here, and uh, Angelina's next to me, and Brad's next to her, and I'm trying to check out her, uh, her yeah. tattoos. Yeah, sure. Her tattoos. Yeah, her what? <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> yeah. and then the commercial break happens. They both go to the restroom, and I'm still there. When they come back, I said, Angelina, you, you forgot your clutch. And then she says, how cute. You knew it's called a clutch. Isn't that cute, babe? She's talking to Brad, and Brad looks at me and shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and uh, Angelina offers me gum, and I didn't take it. And you saw that piece of gum? Yeah. Oh, but, so you uh, didn't take but, it. But I rescued uh, Angelina's clutch. Nice. Yeah. But it was but, really cool. Now, what I want to, why do they need, isn't, it, isn't the place booked? Why do you need a seat filler? Because when someone gets an award huh? or goes oh. to the restroom, yeah. there's people back there going, go. So that's constant. Oh, there's always, always people there. Yeah. All right. So if Denzel comes up, somebody's sitting in his spot. Okay, very yeah. good. Well, so do you get the same seat every year? Uh, pretty much so, yeah. It's it's, a nice it, is it a good seat? It depends how much money we give the uh, captain. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. well, I mean, hello. Do the little people? Without, I mean, it, without it, his grandfather, no one would be there. I mean, <laughs> what I want to know is, is who's clapping? Is it is it all fans or is it all industry people? I mean, are yeah, there seats? The industry people are down uh-huh. in, in the front, and uh, I mean, and Johnny lunch buckets upstairs. The thing, and then as you come back, and then it's the like I used to sit every year in the same spot, and it was always next to one of the ladies that was up for an Oscar for wardrobe and costume. Right. And <laughs> Best documentary. And there were like three of them down there, all for the same, for the same Oscar. And they finally, I said, who's, who's going to win it? And they all, the two of them pointed to the third one and said, she always gets it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. It's a fun night. It's uh, any, any uh, you, you get a chance to go to the movies these days? Go to movies? Yeah. Do you ever go to movies anymore? I go to it occasionally. Yeah. Anything? Anything? Uh, anything like the old days? Anything sticking out? Well, you know, it's not the old days are gone. You know, yeah. and uh, it's entirely different. You know, but I mean, I, I love what's what's happening in this industry. I mean, you, now with CGI and you can do all no. that. I mean, right. when you needed a train wreck, you actually went on train wreck. You know, when you needed the Red Sea parting, that was a tough one. Yeah. But he got it. <laughs> yeah. But he nailed it. He nailed it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I just, I love what the where this industry is now, and it's because it's so diverse, and it's so you've got so many new talented people that you, that you see. I think grandfather would be very proud of where where it is now. Sure. You know? Great. From uh, from movies to radio and to music, you yeah. before you were in talk radio. Yeah. You were a concert promoter. Yeah. And and one of and I was one a of lawyer so, in between, but yeah, <laughs> it, but one of some some renowned though. I mean, we're talking about San Diego was a hotbed. As seen by movies like Almost Famous and, and such like that. I mean, his opening song was Candy Heat going That's to the right. country. That's right. And Heat, <laughs> that was the story. And some of those bands rolled through San Diego yep. just like they rolled through New York City. They rolled through, through. I go so far back that I remember we did Ike and Tina Turner with Jim Pagney. Did Ike and Tina Turner. They came down in a 1954 Cadillac limousine from L.A. where they were li- living. Couldn't get a radio contract. They were doing what was basically a chitlin circuit. You know, all blacks and whites not invited, black, yeah. you know, et cetera. I was by one in three white people at the Civic Center, and there was just a... Well, they bifurcated and shows that way. turn, just tur- the place blew up. But that was a marketing strategy back then. Yeah. That's how they did yeah, it. Yeah, that's how they did it. Right. But I'll tell you what was interesting. Tina gets up there and starts dancing, and, they, and all of a sudden there's this blinking white light thing going on, and she's almost in slow motion doing her dance, right? And I said, wait a minute, how's that happening? And I turned around, and there was... Ike Turner had invented the strobe. No kidding. Putting a 1,000-watt uh, light bulb uh-huh. behind a fan. Oh, so. And it was fanning down on Tina, and, and she's doing the slow motion thing, and I thought, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I want to hear more about this. This was the 60s, right? Way back. <laughs> <laughs>
on the air. Roger Hedgecock, Joe Harper, Allie Wagner. You think they're you think they're working hard, right? That is the last thing we play at every single gig of every thing for the last ten years. Those who didn't rehearse it, they said, "We need a song for the C block. Let's just do this." <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Sounds good tonight. Yeah. Sounds good every time. Yeah. We, I think we did that. If I'm not mistaken, we uh, I, when we arranged that many years ago. I think we ripped that off of Israel Houghton, which is a gospel guy, which I think that exact thing is in some one of their music, but we've been taking it. So well done. Sully Band, ladies and gentlemen, they sound much better yeah. without me. Yeah. <laughs> and I just saw a couple of uh, viewers having USS Midway Museum t-shirts. Yes. You must have saw the Sully Band, right? Oh, thanks for coming. Yeah. That was Woo! a fun show. You guys had a great gig. That was, there was a lot of people there. Do I spot, do I spot famous dancers in the audience? Yes. Yeah. I spot the famous dancers famous in the audience? Famous dancers. You want, to, you want to call them out? Who are they? Uh, so I have my daughters, Lily and Lexi, and their friend Brooke. They're, they're all com competitive dancers. They're not just they competitive dancers. National. They're the best dancers. Like, they're number one all, they're, they're, every time I see them, there's. They're number one to me. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, didn't we have, what was her name? What's, what is the dancer lady's name? Oh, Mary uh, Murphy. Mary Murphy. Yeah. Have you guys said to meet Mary Murphy? Do you know who Mary Murphy is? Dan is it Dancing with the Stars? Or probably uh, so you think you can dance. So you think you can dance. Yes. We had to get her in to do, to do a thing with them, right? Oh, well, I, great to see you guys. Thank Thanks you. for coming out. Thanks to all you guys for coming out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> all right, Allie. We already heard from Roger talk about some celebrities and Joe Harper talk about celebrities. You interview everybody. Do you have a cool celebrity story? Um, well, I have two quick ones. Uh, one, when I was working, it was really cool. I don't know, six months ago, had the opportunity to go and interview Gordon Ramsay, who is wow. now become such a well-known household name. The chef. And so, yeah, the chef. Um, he was so sweet, and I got him to do the idiot sandwich bit with me, yeah. which was, <laughs> I know, a dream come true. I mean, I, it, in a perfect world, I would have, I tried. I learned from one of his YouTube videos how to cook <laughs> eggs, and I was so impressed. I had no idea. Like, he really is that good. Uh -huh. He's so much taller in real life, too. I really? Think that, also, usually people are shorter in yeah. real life. He was taller. I was... Surprise. So he was one that, yeah, he was very gracious, very nice. Um, my other one was we were at South by Southwest one time, and we were at one of these VIP parties with a bunch of the celebrities who were there, and John Hamm was there. And I'm like, oh, wow. I was such a For big, Mad Men. For Mad and Men. And Top Gun more recently. And Top Gun more recently. And I was like, oh, I'm such a big fan. So he was in the VIP, VIP area. And I'm like, oh, I can't possibly. I said to Trevor, my husband, I go, oh, I can't, I can't say hi to him. And Trevor goes, Yes, you can. He walks up. He's all, hey, uh, John, would you take a picture with my wife? John goes, sure. And I go, oh, my gosh, you're amazing. And he goes, you're not wrong. <laughs> and, then he, and he's winking in my photo. And it was the coolest thing. Well, did you have a microphone there? It was just you? No, it was just, just me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It was such a fun Do you have that selfie? Yes, and he's winking in the selfie, which is oh, even better. Awesome. So he was exactly like... He was in Mad Men, and I thought that was so cool. And come to find out, it was his birthday, so he was okay. being extra nice. You know, I watch television and, and movies a lot, and there's always a scene at the Del Mar racetrack. How does that work? Do they call you and say, hey, we want to do a movie here? Can we, and is it like during the season? Sometimes it is, yeah. We, we, we did a lot of those shows that were on like um, mm -hmm. you know, Entourage and things mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. the, I got in trouble because I did the, uh, so Shaw's of Sunset Boulevard, and I, and then we did Caitlin, and uh, it was like, you know, but finally my wife said, stop that. Oh, you're, <laughs> you know, you're really looking bad on those. So, yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, we, we, you know, I like to do the old shows, the movies, but you know, when they were doing Seabiscuit, where Seabiscuit ran at Del Mar, but that was in the old grandstand, so you couldn't really shoot it there anymore, so they went, you know, to a small track back. But did they, did they shoot part of it? Because I remember there were some actors that were, that were in town that were for, that were doing Seabiscuit. Were they at the Yeah, yeah the, the, uh, 
a couple of actors and the director. Um, the director actually was a, is kind of a racetrack guy, uh -huh. and uh, so they were all down there, but they weren't shooting there. They were just you know kind of hanging out. Roger, talk to us about some of the celebrities um, that weren't celebrities when you first hired them that, that we may know now, because there's a lot of these guys that you booked as music as a, as a, as a uh, promoter. That well, we, I remember that we, when you weren't a celebrity and you know, interned at the radio station. <laughs> and look at you now. I was yeah. talking about real music. Oh, real, oh, real music. Yeah. Real guys. <laughs> like, I think you were one of the first to book a guy named Carlos Santana. First time, before his album came out, he was down at the uh, San Diego State in the stadium they've destroyed now and put the mm -hmm. basketball thing on. And uh, we had the Grateful Dead and Santana down there. And we had the, uh, a certain uh, uh, security group uh -huh. called the Hells Angels. They yeah. were good. And, uh, that was your security. Yeah, fresh, they were. Yeah, fresh from Altamont. Fresh from Altamont. I figured the success they had there. We had been, anyway, nobody remembers that anymore, Tommy. The, um, but I, I do. I still get forty-six cents a, a quarter residuals from some detective show that they filmed at this at this at uh, Del Mar, and they had me, as mayor, you know, playing two seconds of uh, of, of probably a losing uh, <laughs> a losing yeah. horse. Uh, but I, they had, and it was, I, I was on, you know, camera for maybe, you know, four or five seconds. But I still get like forty-five cents. Was, but was, were, do you, was that your full-time vocation back then, promoting shows? Yeah. Well, and I had to how, get to how, college. So you were in yeah. college and happened. So you're yeah. what, nineteen years in old, twenty years old? No, and 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 into law school, and so I had to get. So I was up in San Francisco going to law school at the same time that all these bands were exploding. Right. You know, Quicksilver and uh, Airplane yeah. and uh, and Big Brother and Holding Company and Janis Joplin and uh, Country Joe and the Fish and all these people, right? And so I, I would go to all the concerts and shows because who wants to go to law school? Right. So, <laughs> so it was a it was That's a great point. I, you know, the summer after I graduated, I went to this class that t taught you how to take the test. Uh huh. And I said, "Is that what that means?" So I'll just I take. I'll just do that. Idea. So did you go out? Did you get the venue first? Did you get the artist first? Because I mean, you had to. Well, then I did the I did the colleges. So I had about okay. eighty five oh. colleges in California under contract to our group, and then when when uh, you know Fillmore West would get BB King, and then they'd get him for. Two days, three days. I'd get him for four more days, so it was worth it for him to come out right. to the West Coast and put him in colleges all over uh, California. And the, did the colleges pay, or was it all ticket sales? Hard, hard ticket sales. They all paid. No kidding. Okay. <laughs> it was like this is not this is not a. You know, so when Woodstock charitable. was happening in '69, August of '69, on the East Coast, yeah. you were doing exactly that over on here. the West Coast. Yeah, and I was at uh, uh, as I told you, I was at uh, the show in Monterey, Monterey Pop '67, summer '67. When Otis Redding and Janis yeah. Joplin and all these people were there, the fire with and, Jimi Hendrix, the guitar, and and Jimi Hendrix catches his guitar and fire. By the way, do you have his guitar out here? I know. I think it's somewhere. Yeah, we have the classic guitar back there. You saw the broken clash face. But there. I did. They're great. We got a couple. All right. I can spend a whole I can spend a whole day listening to your concert promotion stuff. Well, they should shoot up on the break. Hi, Mayor May I brought that song. <laughs> it's a good song. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, um, we have a lot of people. We have a couple of people <laughs> that have questions for our guests. There's one person that didn't want to ask it. She was too embarrassed, but she wanted to know from Allie who cut your hair. <laughs> your friend. Alice. Your, no, no, no. Originally. Allison. Your friend Jamie oh, up wow. in Escondido. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a cool. plug? She did it. So I Jamie have, Lane. Yeah, Jamie Lane. People like this cut, though, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Or, Beautiful. Yeah. When yeah. you find somebody good, you stick with Who's them. Who cut your hair, Tommy? Um, <laughs> some barber dude next to Vons. <laughs> <laughs> I know him well. That's good. So do we have do we do we have, we have, our, do we have one, questions? We have? A young woman over there has a question for I think Mr. Hedgecock. I have a question for you. If you were the mayor right now, what would you do with the homeless? Huh. Good Tough question. question. Tough question. And I'll tell you what's interesting about it. Because uh, I guess you look at these homeless encampments, and I see a lot of tents. Do you know what tents cost? I mean, how do they, people who don't have a home but have a lot of money to buy, they have cell phones, they have drugs, they have tents, they have dogs. I've seen dogs. I've, I mean, they have pets. They have, I'm, I'm saying to myself, how, it turns out, because I looked into it, that they're getting a lot of government money. People who are working, 
are paying money to subsidize people who not only don't work, but are defecating on the sidewalk. I don't know how we're putting up with, frankly, I don't know how we're putting up with this. Uh, when I was mayor, back in the real old days, we took care of it by simply, you know, sweeping people out. And if they wanted to get some help, we had some real help, Father Joe's place and other places. And we got, and I've raised over a couple of million dollars for Father Joe's place. But I, and, and I want to be compassionate about that. But I also want to get these deadbeats off the street. They're killing downtown. They're killing the neighborhoods. It's got to, it's got to end. That's why. Hedgecock. Not running. Hedgecock 2024. Come on. Hedgecock. No. Well, 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 the problem, well, I, I, there, there, there is a, a, an issue with San Diego government yep. in that there's, there, because the city council is, is in, is, has, a, has so much power, if you have, and the city council is, is largely blue in this, in this city, if you have a red mayor or an independent mayor, they still can't get anything done that they want to get done without the blessing of the city council. Any way around that ever? For the most part, but there is a way around it because the strong mayor portion of this uh, charter now, as, as opposed to when I was there when it wasn't, right. it was a strong mayor thing. He actually controls the budget. The mayor, if he wants to, could X people out. He could X departments out. They would have to override it with a two-thirds vote. He probably can, can sustain a veto. Uh, th there's, a, there's a real, as you were saying, a vacuum of leadership. There are the tools to make a difference. They're just not being used sure. because everybody's afraid of the media, the unions, whatever the pressure group is that's, that's making them look ridiculous in public or attacking their donors or doing all that kind of crazy stuff. So, yeah, the, the, the tools are there to solve these problems. They're not being solved. Well, I think, and I think we can get a return back to... Um, some good times in San Diego. I, I think one of the ways to do that, as I said before, Kevin Faulkner, and I'm not, I'm not paid by Kevin to say this or not, but, and, and people know that I'm close to him because I, I believe in the guy, but he's running for District 3 County Supervisor. My old district. Who could make a big difference in this town. That's a big, that's a big seat, and county supervisors have a lot more power than you anticipate. They're, they have all the power of the state. The county government is actually an arm of the state government, so everything the state p piles down in terms of regulations and laws and so forth right. is administered by the county. So they're, the, they're sitting there with the ability to really make some difference in social programs, in welfare programs, in all kinds of other things that they administer. And yet, it's all going the wrong way. I agree. So if you, if you are looking for change in San Diego, go donate to Kevin Faulkner's campaign and, and support what he's trying to do. And I think you're going to realize we could get San Diego back to where it was, or at least close to it. Uh, and it's not going to take not 20 years. It can do it in the next three or four years. Right. Mr. Harper, yes, when is the track over? From now through over? September 10th. It's closing day. And you have that big race <clears throat> when? The Pacific Classic. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere when, in there. When is that? Somewhere in there. Somewhere no, in there. I look like the racing secretary here. I don't know. Yeah. Joe, is there still, is the Crosby season still happening in November? Are you still doing Yeah, it? yeah, sure. That's, that's very uh, popular, you know. It's, it's really works well, especially the East Coast horses come out and the East Coast jockeys, because they're all it's freezing back there anyway, and nobody wants to be at Aqueduct. But, but yeah, so uh, we do. We do. Well, speaking of lifting San Diego, any any uh, any uh, word on the street or Breeders' Cup potentially again? Breeders' Cup's coming back next year. Wow, that's yep. huge, and that is yeah. big, big. big. That's that Super very, Bowl time. Very, very big, and, it, and yeah. it usually goes back and forth, coast to coast. It was it was kind of we all thought it was going to go to Churchill Downs, but uh, well, what do you want? You want to wake yeah. up in Louisville or Del Mar? Yeah, that's right? exactly so, right. That's so a, that's uh, we got a good it. point. And, and, no, it's true. <laughs> and, 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 and with respect to that, um, the little cities that you guys create because of Del Mar um, Thoroughbred Club, with, with where the horses stay, where the jockeys stay, and everything else, I can see it in Del Mar starting to sort of pop up right now. So that economic impact is happening right this side. It's, uh, it's very big. It's a $100 million deal you know, yeah. for that one day. Yeah. And isn't it true other tracks across the country go to the guy that works for you that controls the dirt? And they asked for his yeah. advice. There's a, dirt, there's a well, dirt guy? You got a yeah, dirt guy? I, I got a the dirt guy. I got a guy. I got a guy, and he knows he's dirt. Yeah. When Churchill Downs was getting all that media attention, you know, right. in front of the number of horses at Fatality, uh, they call right away, and, and we sent our guy back there. And uh, he What's his name? Look at the track. Yeah. Can't tell you. He's got his own dirt guy. Yeah. Dennis the Dirt Man. Yeah. Dennis the yeah. Dirt yeah. Man. No kidding. Dennis yeah. I see, I see one last question about that. I see in roaming around North County, you guys take it seriously because... That track looks like it's redone every single year. I mean, the, the infield looks like it's completely done yeah. over and resawed and everything. Is, 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 is yeah, there... it's uh, you know we have two racetracks basically the dirt and the turf and uh, the turf is uh, actually it's Greg Norman number one was the original plant setting of a salt tolerant uh, Bermuda, but uh, the dirt yeah you have to keep it it's it's a living thing you know yeah. and. Uh, you know, we can spend, when we redid it, it, it cost you $5 million to redo it, you know. And uh, when we were losing some horses way back, and uh, we started getting a hardcore, you know, 
grip on the, not just the racing surfaces, but where these horses were coming from. Were they healthy when they got here? What are they doing? Uh, watch them. I hired a bunch of vets to watch them in the morning because we got 2,000 horses out there. You can spot things easily. They can. And so we went from uh, an un unacceptable number of horses down to, to zero. Yeah. And uh, so right now, we're, for the last four years, we've been the safest track in North America. And uh, I point out every time. Continue. And government got involved, which we liked at this time. You know, I, weird saying I want to be overwatched by the government, but it was right. And the uh, Heisa Horse Racing Integrity Safety Act. They watch these things, and it's so it's you know it's, oh. it's a country well here it comes we yeah. can't wait to be out there yeah Ali Wagner best reporter on KUSI in my opinion and yes. you're my favorite in the city favorite what are you talking about you're my favorite anchor and I tell you that all the time what's what's next for you oh man we're uh, getting ready for pep rally season and just keep doing you know. As long as I'm able to tell the fun stories that I like to tell and give people platforms to showcase their passions, then that's what I'm happy doing. How do people follow you on social? Like, what's the best way to do it? Allie Wagner TV. Allie Wagner TV. Go check it out. <laughs> All right. It's Good been a pleasure. Allie Roger Wagner. Hescock, Allie Wagner, Joe Harper. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week.